Hi, my name is Paul Kerner. I'm a General Motors world-class certified technician serving at a Chevrolet dealership, and my specialty is Corvette service and care. If you'd like to join me for a quick battery maintenance and care video, let's get started. When we're talking about battery maintenance, we're talking about accurate tests and also inspecting your battery terminals correctly to make sure that there's not a problem with any type of oxidation. Now, in this particular case, we have a side terminal here. And you notice the terminal on the left is actually oxidized. You can see the oxidation in this location right here, whereas the negative battery terminal side is actually nice and clean, exactly the way it should be. This level of oxidation can sometimes create problems with battery tests. So it's always key to accurately look at the battery terminals prior to battery testing. Now you notice in this particular instance, we have an actual lead acid that was running down the side of the battery. In this particular instance, a battery acid mat will be a good way to actually insulate components, especially on fifth generation where battery acid leakage can damage the powertrain control module located directly below the battery tray. So we would take this, we would put the hash mark side down and then place the battery on top of it and then clamp it down correctly. From that point, we would then correctly install, for clean battery terminals, we would install the battery terminal very, very easily, but make sure that it's straight. And then once you get it down, for using a side terminal battery wrench, don't use more than two fingers. That will not over tighten the battery terminal and as long as it does not move when you try to wiggle it, you're good enough to start your battery test. The first step to battery maintenance is determining if your battery is sound enough to stay in the car or if it may need replacement. So what we're going to do is we're going to test the batteries with a solar BA7 battery tester. This works on both lead flood acid, absorbent glass mat, and spiral gel cell. Now we're going to test both those terminal designs and show you exactly how to test accurately to make sure that you get a correct test. Let's get started. You attach up your battery tester, positive side first, negative side next. We're starting with our cold cranking amp test. Now this is a basic battery test. When you hook up your connections, make sure to rock them back and forth to get a pretty nice clean tight. If your battery bolts are over oxidized, they will not accurately test and they should be replaced prior to testing. Now, it shows 12 volts, which to me is a little low. I prefer to see at least 12.3. From here, you're going to press enter. The battery, it's going to ask you for your type. Now your type would be listed on the back here conventional SLI flood battery. You can see it says SL1, press to continue. Then it will ask you for a cold cranking amp. Then we know it's, as per the label, it's 650. Then you press enter. You can see that the green LED lights up and you will see 594 cold cranking amps. Now, that's borderline. You can see the yellow LED is a little bit on. It's right in the middle. I would say for this particular test, I would say it's acceptable, though not ideal. Now, we're testing a top post on the Z06. If you look here, only one mistake I'm looking at right now. The battery terminal itself is not fully seated all the way down. Although the terminal is tightened to the correct specification of, of 89 inch pounds, it's not seated low enough. So sometimes these terminals can loosen up. However, the battery disconnect is on the correct side and it is ready for test. As you could see in this particular one, the battery voltage is standing a little bit low. I certainly would recharge the vehicle under normal circumstances and then retest the battery. But we're going to do a quick test here just to show you what the difference is. 1183, it's going to ask you for the battery, which is an SL1. It's going to ask you for the cold cranking amps. Now this particular battery is only 590. We're going to bring the, bring the test down to 590, and then we're going to press enter. Now, this battery is borderline at 320 cold cranking amps. 
Thus, the reason why I recommend replace uh, recharging of the battery first and then an accurate retest prior to replacement and or utilizing the battery in service driving the vehicle. Now that we have tested the batteries and we've determined that everything is in good working order, a lot of times a battery disconnect switch is always an important part of battery maintenance. The reason why being is that using a disconnect will help prevent electrical drainage over time. Now in certain instances you may want to use a battery disconnect switch with a bypass to it. This will keep both your radio presets, your memory package settings, and other finite points to your vehicle in memory without having to worry about excess electrical flow draining your battery. Now you can see here for the top post a bypass is actually a fused jumper lead that will go around and only allow a small amount of electricity. Sometimes as in side terminal battery cases they just like to disconnect especially on C3 and older vehicles that do not have a lot of electrical accessories that require memory. When you're installing these disconnects it is important that you get them tightened correctly so that they do not move once they are tightened. Do not over tighten them. Torque specs differ from fastener to fastener and top post battery terminals usually only need to be tightened to 100 inch pounds, usually nothing more. When you do battery terminals, it's important to prevent oxidation as we've shown you earlier. Using a simple dielectric lubricant will help prevent that in future. What you would do is on side terminals, you would actually coat the rubber insulator with a skim coat of dielectric grease. This will prevent oxidation because air will not pass through to the connection location. On top battery terminals, usually a slight skim coat on the post before you install the terminal disconnect is your best bet to decrease oxidation over time, thus not having further battery issues. Now some Corvette owners might not want to disconnect their batteries just for simple convenience and certainly that's an option to you. However, when you leave a battery connected, all batteries will be drained in a motor vehicle. So a battery maintainer is actually your best course of action in a situation like this. Now SeaTech makes the actual battery maintainer package that is put into Corvette for the sixth generation and the new upcoming seventh generation. It's a very, very good battery maintainer that does not overload the battery or undercharge the battery. Now, the best and the most easiest way to do this is utilizing their clamp connections at whether it's the top post or utilizing them on the side post. You can use them either way. The plug and the disconnect is right here, so you certainly can take it off when you wish. And then simply plug in the battery maintainer and then plug your maintainer into a 120 volt power outlet. Now in some cases some of us don't even have a battery tester and certainly that's understandable. In certain cases like that what we suggest you use is a battery life indicator. Essentially what this does is it very simply measures the voltage in your battery and it will give you green yellow and red LEDs to indicate the state of charge on the battery. Now for the purpose of this demonstration we've connected them to the top post battery disconnects just to show how it is connected to a top post terminal. Remember do not over torque these clamps you will distort the actual terminal itself. Then you take the life indicator and then you plug it into the SeaTech as you would normally plug it in then plug the SeaTech into your power outlet. Now note, on side terminal batteries it is important that you do not try to fit these eyelets underneath the battery terminal. If you try to do that they will not seat completely and you will not have correct electrical connection. Now if you want to install this on side terminal batteries you can actually go to your local GM dealer or local AC Delco distributor and ask for a extra long battery bolt and a battery terminal spacer. They will be able to look that up in the catalog 
and be able to supply you with one for each. And then you put the eyelet underneath the battery bolt, put the spacer on top of that, thread it through the battery terminal, and torque your side terminals to 11 foot-pounds. Now for some 6th generation Corvette owners, sometimes the battery goes dead no matter what you try to do. And certainly there have been issues with that in the past. Now sometimes an emergency access system is actually the best course of action if your battery ever does go dead. One like this would connect up to chassis ground with the eyelet and would also connect up to your fuse block. And what this, will, this helps do is that even if the battery is totally dead, the clamps are down at the front of the bumper cover, clamped into an inconspicuous location. You take this, you hook this up to a, a pair of jumper cables or a, another battery, and this will allow you enough power to open up the doors on either the driver or the passenger side, so that way you can pop the hood, therefore be able to charge the battery.